filthy, kinky, naughty, medieval nuns. The shocking things they did. When you think of nuns, you might picture a quiet, reserved woman living a life of devotion and prayer. But did you know that nuns in medieval times were capable of some pretty wild behavior? These are the shocking things the medieval nuns did back then. Stay tuned. History. Before we get into the butter of things, let me tell you a few important things about the life of nuns in medieval society. The nuns were the female version of monks. They devoted their lives to prayer, service, and contemplation in their religious communities. But we guess they took their devotion too seriously. Like, so seriously that they weren't even allowed to speak unless absolutely necessary. Imagine using only hand gestures and grunts to express yourself with other people. Awkward. But the rules didn't stop there. Nuns were also expected to fast regularly, sleep on hard beds, and wear uncomfortable clothing. Basically, it was like living on a never-ending yoga retreat, minus the downward dogs and vegan smoothies. And don't even get me started on the lack of Netflix. I mean, what did these nuns even do for fun? These strict rules meant that any behavior that deviated from the norm was considered scandalous. And trust us, these nuns knew how to push the boundaries. From veiling to barnyard monasteries to claiming divine visions, they found plenty of ways to keep things interesting. Veiling and the art of distraction. While it may be hard to believe, medieval nuns found creative ways to spice up their otherwise mundane lives within the confines of their religious order. One such way was through veiling, in which nuns were blindfolded or had their heads covered during religious ceremonies. But what could possibly go wrong with a little blindfolded worship, you might ask? Well, let's just say that nuns are only human after all, and sometimes human nature takes over. You see, veiling provided an opportunity for mischief and sexual experimentation that nuns might not otherwise have had. With their eyes covered, they could touch and feel each other without fear of being caught. And as you might imagine, things often got pretty heated beneath those veils. You have to hear this popular story involving a group of nuns who took their veiling to the next level by incorporating a live rooster into their worship. Apparently, the nuns would take turns holding the rooster beneath their veils, allowing the bird to peck at their sacred parts as a form of religious ecstasy. Needless to say, this practice did not go over well with the church authorities. But the fun didn't stop there. Some nuns reportedly used their veils as a cover for other activities. For example, they might sneak in extra food during mealtimes by hiding it beneath their veils. Or they might use their veils as a convenient hiding spot for contraband items like jewelry or books. Of course, not all nuns were on board with the veiling shenanigans. Some saw it as a distraction from their religious duties and a violation of their vows of celibacy. But for others, veiling provided a much-needed outlet for their pent-up desires and frustrations. Barnyard monasteries. You may have heard of sister wives or polygamy, but have you ever heard of barnyard monasteries? That's right. In medieval times, some nuns lived together in communal homes and engaged in sexual relationships with each other. And no, we're not kidding. You might also wonder why these nuns took their devotion to God to an extreme level. Some historians believe that it was a way for nuns to express their love for God through physical love with one another. In other words, they saw it as a form of spiritual intimacy. But let's not forget that these were still human beings with human desires. It's likely that many of the nuns simply craved the physical and emotional connection that came with sexual relationships. And since they were already living together in close quarters, it was probably just a matter of time before things got steamy. Wait till you see how the church responded to these barnyard monasteries. Well, let's just say that they were not amused. The church saw these relationships as a direct violation of the nuns' vows of celibacy and a threat to the church's purity as a whole. The church authorities cracked down hard on these barnyard monasteries. Some nuns were forced to leave their orders and were publicly shamed and humiliated. Others were even subjected to physical punishment, such as whipping or public flogging. Some nuns were still willing to take risks and engage in these relationships as they didn't care about the consequences. Their desires were more powerful. For them, the benefits outweighed the risks. And who can blame them? Not every day you find someone who understands you on such a deep emotional level. 
So the next time you hear about a group of nuns living together in close quarters, don't be so quick to judge. They may just be expressing their devotion to God somewhat unconventionally. And hey, who knows, maybe they're on to something. The story of Sister Benedetta Carlini. We cannot but tell you about the story of Sister Benedetta Carlini, a 17th century Italian nun who claimed to have received God's visions and engaged in seriously scandalous behavior with another nun. It's like a soap opera, but with more nuns and less product placement. Sister Benedetta Carlini was the head of the convent of the Mother of God in Pisia, Italy. She was known for her piety and ability to receive visions from God, making her a highly respected figure in her community. But as it turns out, Sister Benedetta had a few secrets of her habit. She was keeping her sexual relationship with another nun named Sister Bartolomea Crivelli. According to Sister Benedetta, her relationship with Sister Bartolomea was divinely inspired and was a way for them to express their devotion to God. But as you can imagine, this did not go over well with the church authorities. When they found out about Sister Benedetta and Sister Bartolomea's relationship, they launched an investigation into the convent. What they found was shocking. Sister Benedetta had not only engaged in sexual acts with Sister Bartolomea, but also faked her visions from God. It was all just a ploy to gain power and influence within the convent. The church authorities were not pleased, to say the least. Sister Benedetta was put on trial and confessed to all her misdeeds. She was found guilty of heresy, fraud, and sins against nature. But wait, it gets even crazier. After she was found guilty, Sister Benedetta claimed that she was possessed by the devil and that all of her actions were the result of demonic influence. Talk about a last-ditch effort to save yourself from punishment. Unfortunately for Sister Benedetta, her possession defense didn't hold up in court. She was sentenced to life imprisonment and spent the rest of her days in isolation. The story of Sister Benedetta Carlini is a testament to the power of scandal and the lengths people will go to for power and influence. It also sheds light on the way the church viewed homosexuality during this time period, but let's not forget to give credit where credit is due. Sister Benedetta was one heck of a drama queen. Faking visions from God and claiming possession by the devil, that's some next level stuff. Witch nuns uncovering the dark side of medieval convents. When we think of nuns, we usually imagine women who are chaste, obedient and devout. However, during the medieval period, some nuns were accused of engaging in practices that were considered deeply disturbing and even satanic. These witch nuns were accused of casting spells, performing curses, and communing with demons. In this section, we'll explore the stories of some of these infamous nuns and how the church dealt with them. The idea of witchcraft had been around for centuries before the medieval period, but it wasn't until the 14th and 15th centuries that the church began to take witchcraft accusations seriously. Women were often the targets of these accusations, and nuns were no exception. The church was especially suspicious of nuns living in isolated communities, where they were considered vulnerable to demonic influences. One of the most notorious cases of witch nuns was that of the nuns of Loudun in 17th century France. The nuns at the convent of St. Ursula claimed to be possessed by demons and accused a local priest, Father Urbain Grandier, of being their tormentor. Grandier denied the accusations, but he was eventually found guilty and executed. However, modern historians believe that the nuns may have suffered from mass hysteria rather than demonic possession. Another famous case was that of Sister Maria Crocifissa della Concezione, an Italian nun who claimed to have been possessed by the devil and to have written a letter in his handwriting. The letter was filled with strange symbols that were thought to be a code, but to this day no one has been able to decipher it. Some people believe that Sister Maria may have been mentally ill rather than possessed, but her story has become legend. Do you know the church's response to these allegations of witchcraft among nuns? Unfortunately, it wasn't always compassionate. In some cases, nuns who were accused of witchcraft were subjected to brutal torture to extract confessions. Those who confessed were often executed, sometimes by being burned alive. It's important to remember that the stories of witch nuns are just one aspect of the complex history of convents and monasteries. While some nuns did engage in practices considered scandalous, most were simply trying to live a life of devotion to God. 
Nonetheless, the stories of the witch nuns continue to capture our imaginations and remind us of the darker side of medieval history. Well, that was certainly a wild ride. Who knew that nuns could be accused of such dark and disturbing things? Nuns have a reputation for being both pious and mischievous. No wonder they're known as the holy rollers of the religious world. But as we've seen throughout this video, the history of nuns is full of surprises and contradictions. From the scandalous behavior of veiled nuns to the communal living of barnyard monasteries, nuns have always found ways to push the boundaries of what is considered acceptable. So the next time you encounter a group of nuns, don't be afraid to approach them and ask about their experiences. Who knows? They may have a scandalous story or two to share. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more weirdly amazing history videos like this. Tell us what you think, and if you have other shocking stories that we didn't mention, please comment down below. We can't wait to hear them. See you next time.